In this screencast, I'm going to go over the electric field due to a uniform semicircular distribution of charge. I've made a quick sketch of our initial starting conditions, and all of these derivations typically start with some expression about charge density. But before we do that, we have to make a couple of assumptions. For starters, I've assumed that we have a, a positive distribution of charge along this semicircle, and that if I were to take some segment of the semicircle, let's say that little piece right there, then I could say that that little arc length, which I could call ds, or the differential of s, s being arc length, is related to this angle here that it makes with um, the angle theta all the way back to point p. So let's go ahead and define that as point p, and let's go ahead and say that this angle here is going to be equal to theta, but this particular angle here is d theta. As d, as the differential of theta, or this tiny little bit of theta gets really small, then so does the arc length ds. And the, the tiny little bit of charge along that arc length produces an electric field at point P, which would be directed down and to the right. And if I did that a bunch of times with all the different pieces here, would get, since they're all the same distance away, they'd all be the same size. And you could see that we'd get this kind of symmetry here that all of the X pieces or all of the X components of the electric fields uh, would cancel each other out. There'd be an equal amount going to the right and an equal amount going to the left. And we'd only be left with a Y component of the electric field in the downward direction. So let's go ahead and because of that, symmetry argument, you know, we, we can say that there's only going to be an, uh, a Y component in the electric field. Additionally, we're going to start with this concept of linear charge density. I'm going to use the Greek lowercase lambda. And I'm going to say that generally speaking, that the charge per unit length is going to be the total charge Q distributed all across the semicircle divided by the total length L. And furthermore, I could say that that's equal to the charge Q over half of a circumference. Of course, a circumference is equal to 2 pi r. And so now I can just say that that's equal to pi times r, where r is defined as the radius, the distance away from the semicircle to this point P that I'm investigating. Additionally, I can go ahead and say that not only is it equal to the total charge distributed across that semicircle, but linear charge density doesn't, doesn't matter. Almost like, well, not almost, exactly like volumetric charge density. It, volumetric charge density uh, might be the charge per unit volume, or the mass density would be the mass per unit volume. It doesn't matter how much you're talking about. Therefore, I can say that the little bit of charge dq on that tiny little segment ds um, dqds is also equal to the linear charge density. So these statements right here are important starting points when doing these kind of electric field derivations. And, and we'll see that, th that once you start practicing them, they show up again and again and again. Let's go ahead and make our, our initial statement. We're going to say that the, the little differential of charge uh, sorry, the differential of the electric field in the y direction, we're, we're picking this one right here, um, is equal to a constant 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, that's equal to k, but we're just using different variables to describe that, times the little bit of charge dq over the separating distance squared. And I'll use capital R here in this case because I'm dealing with the, the radius r. And I have to multiply that by the sine of the angle theta because I'm only talking about the y component here, right? So I have to remember that because I'm only talking about the y component, that drives this here um, using, you know, traditional vector math techniques. So before we get started, it's important to see here that all I've really done is treated that little differential of charge along the semicircle as a point charge. You should know that the electric field due to some point charge is equal to k q over r squared, and k is just 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. In this case, we've replaced q with dq over r squared, and since we're only talking about the y component, we've added the, the trigonometric piece here, sine. 
So this is where our starting, you know, this is where we start from. And I think that you should see its relationship to, to a point charge. The next step is going to be to um, make some substitutions. And the first substitution that we're going to make is the idea that DQ is equal to, and you can see that I'm referencing here my statements. I'm going to describe DQ in ter terms of linear charge density. It's going to be equal to lambda ds. So I've used this piece and this piece. And ds, or that little piece of the uh, arc length, is equal to r, the radius, times d theta. And so that gets substituted into here, and I'm left with dq is equal to lambda r d theta. Okay, so that's going to get substituted in, and the next thing I get is the differential of the electric field in the y component is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times dq, which I'm now substituting for. That's going to be equal to lambda r d theta over r squared and the sine theta piece is still here. <clears throat> the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the integral of this piece. So I'm going to write my integrand here. And 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught is going to be a constant. So I'm going, to, I'm going to go ahead and put the integrand in here. And I need to define my limits of integration. I'm going to go between 0 and pi. Now this is a semicircle. So if this is 0, up here would be pi over 2. This would be pi and 3 pi over 2 down here. Um, so I need to kind of adjust to what I'm being asked about. So that's why the limits of integration are 0 and pi. Of course, this is just adding up the, the differentials of the electric field. So I'm just left with EY on the left-hand side. I have to pull out my constants. Let's go ahead and define what those constants are. R is a constant. Let's go ahead and eliminate this R with one of the two in the denominator. Lambda is a constant right here. So I'm going to move that out. So that becomes lambda over 4 pi epsilon naught times the integral of 0 to pi of sine theta d theta. And I have an R in the denominator right here that I forgot to pull out and I'm going to I'm going to put that out here in front. And the reason is it's a constant r is not changing as I move around the circle. Now my next step is to go ahead and do the integration. On the left hand side this is still ey. None of the constants have changed. That's lambda over uh, r times 4 pi epsilon naught. And the integral of sine theta d theta is just negative cosine theta. And I have to evaluate it between 0 and pi. And so really what I'm saying is for this little piece right here, uh, if I were to just inspect the integration piece and evaluate it between 0 and pi, I get something that looks like this. So I'm saying negative cosine pi, oops, not theta, pi, bear with me for one second, negative cosine of pi minus negative cosine zero, and the cosine of pi is negative one, so this becomes negative negative one, and the cosine of 0 is 0, so that just becomes plus 0. And so, oh, no, sorry, the cosine of 0 is 1, positive 1. Uh, think in radians unit circle here, right? So this is 1, 0. Uh, this is 0, negative 1. Uh, sorry, uh, negative 1, 0. And so this becomes negative of negative 1 plus positive 1, which gives me 2. So everything in here that I've evaluated is just the number 2. So let's go ahead and move on to our kind of next step. And this becomes 2 times lambda over 4 pi epsilon naught times r. I've just moved the r to the other side. Now we can see that the 2 and the 4 can reduce to just the number 2. 
And the last thing I'm going to do is um, just kind of box this in and say, all right, my final answer then is equal to lambda over 2 pi epsilon naught r. And this is a suitable answer. Now, I could make some substitutions if needed back with this guy. If they didn't want my answer in terms of lambda, I can replace lambda with q and l or pi and r. Uh, and so that'd be pretty easy for me to do. Let's go ahead and do one of those kinds of substitutions where we'd get lambda is equal to q over pi r. And so basically, I could, if I needed to, if I didn't want to have my answer in terms of uh, linear charge density, I could say that EY is equal to Q over 2 pi squared, the pi and the pi are multiplied, epsilon naught R squared. So we can see that I can make these substitutions as needed, but it, you know, it really just depends on, on how the question is being asked.